Hello and congratulations on your new home. At 1836 Property Management, we believe in providing quality service to our tenants so you can enjoy your home to the fullest. Your home comes with several systems which make living comfortable and easy. Today we're gonna to go over some of the details of those systems so you can avoid emergencies and reduce your downtime. Hopefully some of those tricks of the trade will help you enjoy your home to the fullest. Come on, let's get started. Let's go over some of the details of the electrical service to your house. Most of the homes in our area have a exterior main panel and a utility room or garage located sub panel. You'll be able to locate the main panel on your home by following your service meter through to the main panel. As you open the main panel, you'll find that it has a reduced number of breakers because of the size of the breakers. Should you ever encounter a problem in the home, and it's related to electricity, you can always come to the main largest breaker in this exterior or main unit and turn it to the off position. It will be labeled on and off and that will cut off the power to your entire house. If you have problems with any of the subsystems in your house, such as a range, an air conditioner, or a dryer, you could go to those individual ones. Now let's take a look at the sub panel to your electrical system. Many times these are found in the utility room, the master closet or another location inside the house. On some older homes, you may not have a sub panel, although most homes do. This is gonna have the small appliances throughout your home listed, and it will also have breakers for each one of those. If you happen to plug too many extension cords into one socket, you'll notice it will trip one of these circuits and it will automatically go to the off position. Please refrain from plugging that many in again to that single socket and feel free to come in after you've removed those and reset this to the on position. If this automatically trips more than once, please refrain from using it, leave it in the off position, notify us immediately, we'll have an electrician come out and take a peek. We're happy to help you with any issues you may have with your electrical system. Now let's go over the electrical system in your house related to the ground fault circuit interrupters or GFCIs. These outlets will be located in the wet areas of your home such as the kitchen or bathroom. They're installed in a series so that one outlet with buttons on it similar to this may serve several outlets without buttons. These are in place to prevent you from getting electrical shock should you come in contact with water and electricity at the same time. Keep in mind that as they are in a series, one outlet may not have power to it and you'll have to reset that on an outlet somewhere on an adjacent wall or possibly even around the corner in a closet. To test these, you could always press the black test button to ensure that they are working. To reset them, you'll press the red reset button to restore power. Please let us know if any of these don't work when you press those test or reset buttons. We'll be happy to send out an electrician to service them.
Now let's talk a little bit about the gas service to your house. On the exterior of your home, you should locate some pipes coming from the ground, going into your house, and these will all be hard pipes. They'll be serviced by a valve, as well as your gas service meter. The main thing you need to remember on this unit is that the turnoff or the cutoff for the entire house is located right here. If you ever smell gas inside the house, while there are individual cutoffs for each appliance, this is going to be your safest and best bet. If you smell gas, remember, get outside, turn this off by turning the valve perpendicular to the direction of the pipe, call the gas company, and follow up with us. The gas company will be happy to come out for free, investigate the leak, and we'll be happy to get it repaired. Remember, if it's in line, such as this, it's on. If it's perpendicular to the direction of the pipe, it's currently off. Now let's take a moment and talk about the water service to your house. On the exterior of your home, you should find somewhere adjacent to the property line a main service panel which will be used by the city employees and a owner's cutoff panel. If the home is newer and you get lucky, you'll find a cover on there that actually says property owner's cutoff, which makes life easy. On many older homes and even some newer homes, the access to this valve could be covered. If it is covered or you can't locate it, you very well may have to access the city's shutoff valve, which will be inside the larger cover. Each home should have an owner's cutoff or a city shutoff, which will permit you to turn off water to the entire house. This is going to be the same as the gas line to where if the valve is in line with the pipe, the water is on. If you turn it 90 degrees perpendicular to the direction of the pipe, the water will be cut off. This goes to the entire house. In a little bit, we're going to show you how to shut off valves to individual appliances. Don't forget, if an emergency occurs, look for this owner's cutoff valve, or you may have to gain access to this using a wrench and then turning off the valve inside the main city shutoff. Everywhere you have water service in your house, you should have a shutoff valve, whether it be to a toilet, a sink, or even to a supply line on a refrigerator water dispenser. If you have a problem with a particular item, such as a toilet, and it continues to run, you may isolate that particular item until we can get it serviced by turning the valve off in a clockwise motion. Once that's serviced, we'll turn it back on in a counterclockwise motion and return water flow to that area. If for some reason the leak is behind the valve, you'll still have to utilize that main shutoff and the exterior of your home to remove the pressure and the water from this particular area. On the exterior of many of your homes, you'll find open pipes such as these. They should never be in contact with the ground, and they can be located at this height, just above the ground level, or even above the windows on the side of the home. These are all related to the air conditioning and or plumbing system. If you ever see water coming out of these, please notify us immediately. In general, on newer homes, the primary condensation line from your air conditioner goes into a plumbing stack. You may hear it drip, but normally you'll never see it. If you see water coming out of these secondary lines, that means the primary is blocked up and there's a problem. Some homes have a black one inch flexible hose that will run out adjacent to an air conditioner. Please ensure that hose always goes downhill and is never blocked. If that, home, if that hose gets blocked with dirt or debris, the water is going to back up into your home and eventually either rain down from the ceiling or flood from a ground level AC unit. The air conditioning and heating system in many of your homes will either be located in the attic, as this unit is, or in the garage. Either way, they will have very similar components. 
Some of the main items we want to go over today with you are the condensation line and the drain pan. During the hot summer months in our warm climate, condensation builds from use of the air conditioning system. That water has to go somewhere. Primarily, it goes through either a plumbing stack or out those black flexible hoses we discussed, which can be located adjacent to your AC compressor. If that plumbing stack or that black flexible hose gets backed up or clogged, water can back up into the system. This particular unit has a drain pan underneath it, which can collect that water and a shutoff switch, which will then cut the unit off so that it doesn't accumulate any more condensation. One way to keep that drain line clear is during the hot summer months to put approximately a quarter cup of bleach in the open condensation line on your AC unit. About a quarter cup of bleach every 30 days will keep algae from forming and keep your AC system running properly. Hot water heaters are another component of your house that we'd like to discuss with you. There are a few items on these uh, that we want you to be aware of, and they may be located in either the attic, such as this one, or in the garage. Either way, they're composed of primarily the same details. There is a water shutoff valve on the supply line to your hot water heater. As you'll notice, the water shutoff valve is in line, which means it's currently on. By turning this perpendicular, to the direction of the pipe, you can turn off the supply to the hot water heater. If you ever see a leak on the top of it, generally that's the best thing to do is to turn off the supply and notify us immediately. Whatever you do, don't turn off the supply and continue to use the hot water in the house as that will drain the hot water heater and run it dry. Another item is the temperature pressure relief valve. As hot water heaters heat, they build up pressure. This valve is designed to release that pressure should it ever get to a dangerous uh, temperature. You should never hear water or air going through this valve. If you do, please notify us immediately. We're happy to get it serviced. Lastly, we want you to be aware that on the front of each hot water heater is a temperature control. This may be as obvious as this one on the front of the unit or behind a plate. Either way, you should be able to access this with a couple screws or simply turning the knob to adjust the temperature to your preference. Garbage disposals will be located in many of your homes. 90% of the time, these will function without problems. However, if too many food particles are placed down the disposal or foreign objects, there are times when they get clogged. There are generally two different symptoms that you'll find. The first is, is that you hear a humming sound, but there are no blades turning. In that event, there is something clogged, but the disposal is still functioning properly. You would utilize a key such as this and place it in the bottom of the disposal, rotate the key, and it will rotate the blades, freeing the object. If you cannot locate a key, we're happy to provide one for you. You can also utilize a broomstick by placing it in the disposal and rotating the blades manually. Remember to utilize the water to flush any particles through and never ever put any hands or uh, personal objects down the disposal. The second thing that may happen is you may have a disposal which is frozen and it has tripped the power. There is a reset button on the bottom of the disposal. It's usually in red. And when you press this button, it should restore power to the unit. Well, now, whatever caused that to trip will still be in place. So generally, you'll still need to clean the blades and rotate them with either a broomstick or the key provided. Thanks again for your time. We hope through the use of this video, you've either refreshed your memory or gained some valuable knowledge about the components that make up your house. Your knowledge about those components will help you not only maintain the home properly, but also help us troubleshoot any problems should they arise so that we can solve problems quicker and easier. Don't ever hesitate to contact us should you need any assistance or just wanna talk through any issues you're having with your house. Thanks again, congratulations, and it's our pleasure to serve you.